Stop and smell the flowers. <laughs> That was fun. Oh, yeah. Stop and smell it. <laughs> hey, 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 watch out. Right. So, Taylor, any questions you need answered while I'm here? Oh, Ooh, we should find out if there's questions. Let's look. Let's look People right have a, they have Black Soldier Fly questions on Let's our YouTube channel. We have like, we're getting over a thousand series. of these a day every day. Let's look right now. So, in 28 days. Okay. Yeah. 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 What's the highest temperature for BSF and BSFL to survive? Okay, um, the highest temperature threshold depends on the local genetics, but on average, they're gonna start to evacuate any active pile at about 105 to 110. It doesn't mean it's gonna kill them. It means they're gonna leave, leave the pile to actually seek out cooler temperatures through the flight or flight mechanism. When I see my pod get over 105 to 110, I start seeing the juveniles leaving. It's too hot. You gotta bring it down with those, you know those re um, uh, freezable ice packs? I throw two or three of those in the pod that'll lower the, the active pile temperature. Um, people who raise reptiles deliberately want the younger ones, so they force it by putting a heat pad underneath and heating it up above 110. After about 115, they'll perish. Okay, awesome. So that's about, I, try not to let your pod go over 105 or you're going to get immature crawl off. And the immature oh. crawl off is the cream colored ones. Take the harvest, dump it back in, unless you're feeding reptiles or something else exotic like, you know, chameleons or whatever. But um, throw them back in because they still need time to grow. Okay. They're going to be fine. They're just oh, hot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, but you don't, don't do anything nutty. Just go get the re refreezable blocks that you would put in your uh, lunchbox yep. and obviously you don't use that in your lunchbox again but you know <laughs> um, it's your it's your black soldier fly freezer blocks awesome. so, so that was uh, he has another question here and this is posted by someone named some guy okay, okay. <laughs> I've met those before <laughs> they're very interesting and this is part this is part two of black soldier fly production he's commenting on the life cycle okay and he also says, you mentioned here that BSF and L can't grow below 60. Well, what about, say, the Texas desert shrub at 100? Would they grow there? Would they grow eating the Texas? You could see the comment in on the, the shrubs. Screen. Like, like. Okay, what's the highest temperature for BSF to survive? You mentioned here that can't grow below 60. Well, what about, say, the Texas tree? Um, they'll grow at 100. They're going to start um, stressing between 105 and 110. The great thing about the black soldier fly that are native to the desert southwest and the southern drier parts of the U.S., they're more acclimatized towards the hotter temperatures and drier temperatures. I do tell people to take the food waste that they are giving, or the waste stream that they're giving the black soldier flies, and moisten it. The hydrated um, food seems to enhance crawl off at a higher rate than it would naturally because of the added moisture. When the pile's too dry, it's going to keep them from crawling off and you don't want that. But the higher temperature, 100 not a problem. After 105, it starts to be a problem. My gut feeling is the genetics of the Texas strains could probably be more resistant to higher temps, but you're gonna have to put it in full shade. Oh. You get you expose that to sun, and that's going to heat up way too quick. Okay. I hope that answers his question. Okay, let's look for another one. Yeah, we just hooked it on there. And we got one more before I got to get to you. Oh, right. Oh, my God, let's hurry. Yay. I was just bragging on your workshop how great it was. Really awesome. Really I, great. I, I try to convince people not to go buying drugs online to but attract to their local population because their local genetics are going to perform best in there. Start ordering ones grown in Portland, Oregon, and you order them for Mississippi, it's not going to work. Right, right. They're different. Totally. Yeah, and same thing with the desert southwest. And, um, we've had, because of climate change, we've actually had people like in Michigan and Missouri identify these native, and I'm just like, that's incredible. Because usually they're zone 7 and up. They're not even found in the colder climates. Last question. What about Southern California hot and dry in summer? Does relative humidity affect them? Would it typically less than 50 summer? Um, relative humidity, if it's too low and it's too dry, they're not going to crawl off instinctively. 
they need to have they need to have high humidity and they need to have high moisture contact. You can actually increase the humidity by taking some burlap, rinsing it first, because sometimes there's chemical on it, and using it as a topper, like a little blanket on top of your active pile. That's going to increase the relative humidity in the pile. And in fact, it'll prevent a lot of the food scraps from desiccating in the desert southwest. And they'll eat all the way to the top because it also uh, cuts the light down. And so you're not going to get desiccated of the, the food at the top. You're going to increase the humidity. You're going to get better crawl off. So that's a little trick I've learned, the, the burlap topper. Thank yeah. you, Carl. Sure. Have a great workshop. All right, guys. Thanks.